Hi everyone, it's Dawn Del Vecchio coming to you live from Sedona, Arizona. And today is the, what is today? The 18th, I think. It's Wednesday the 18th. So this video is entitled, How to Avoid Unwanted Drama Part 2. And uh, in this video, I'm going to respond to one of the requests made by my dear friend, Susan Spillman, who wanted me to uh, get uh, to address the issue of, let me see, how to, uh, how, what we can do to focus ourselves, be grounded and feel good about where we are and feel safe so we don't have to feel defensive. Hey there, Michael. Welcome. Okay. So let me get connected here. So last week on the 12th of December, I made a video called How to Avoid Unwanted Drama. And if you haven't seen that, go ahead and scroll on my page or like do a little search for my videos and you'll find it. Because I, I, I talk a lot there. There's a lot of information. And the first thing I say, thanks for the love. The first thing I say is if we want to avoid unwanted trauma, we have to not be a match for it. I mean, I said it a little differently than that, but essentially, hey there, Giselle, nice to see you here. Welcome, welcome. Uh, or good morning, I should say, for you over there. So, um, so okay, so I want to break this particular video up into a few parts. So as I said, Last week on the 12th, I made a video called How to Avoid Unwanted Drama. And I talked about how um, in order to avoid it, it's, it's really more accurately said. It's like to, to not be a match to it or not activate that somehow in your own life. Hey, Tina, welcome. So then my friend Susan wrote and requested that I talk about things like, you know, what can we do to focus ourselves? I'm, I'm actually reading... Uh, I wrote down what she had asked. What can we do to focus ourselves, to be grounded, to feel good about where we are, and to feel safe so that we don't need to defend ourselves? So I'm going to address that in a few parts. I actually made a little list here of what I want to talk about. So the first thing I want to talk about is what can we do, kind of what can we do for ourselves to, to take care of our own frequency? to take care of our own needs, uh, and to be in a place where we are not um, really in a, in a frequency match for drama. And if and when drama is in our field, we don't feel that sense of like, oh my God, here I go, they're pulling me in. <laughs> so the first thing really is that we have to look at our own, I mean, it's all about looking within, but step one, is there unresolved trauma or excessive stress in my life and on my shoulders right now. So that's the first thing to ask. If you have a history somewhere in your past of trauma, and that could be early childhood trauma, that could be a car accident, that could be a, an ugly divorce, it could be hurtful friendships, it could be being bullied as a kid. But somewhere where there's sort of unprocessed trauma and or if you have stress. So maybe you have a lot of stress in your life right now or stress, you know, generally such that you feel this sense of pressure and tension all the time. The first thing that you need to do is address these. And there are tons and tons of modalities these days. I mean, you know, in some ways we live in such a crazy world right now, but in other ways we have an incredible resource of healing modalities, some of which can be facilitated virtually. Uh, to, to assist us. So I'm going to make a little list. I'm going to read off a little list here that I wrote. And these are just literally off the top of my mind because I bet there's other ones. There's uh, neuro-linguistic programming and hypnosis. These are the modalities I'm trained in. There's also uh, emotional freedom technique, also called EFT. Uh, there's a, <coughs> our, my friend Susan, who request, had this question, she does a uh, modality, including psycho. She does some um, psychological counseling and e, um, what's what's it called? Fast Track, which is an incredible modality as well. Uh, I've worked with that. I've I've been on the receiving end of that. Also extremely helpful. There's various forms of breath work, which is almost like a. It's kind of like a gestalt, really therapy, where you're really engaging in. Um, transmuting, I would say, old trauma, accessing it and clearing it. 
all of these to some degree can do that. Um, what else do we have? Mindfulness practice. We have a modality called NET, which I've been working a lot with my uh, chiropractor, who's a chiropractor, acupuncturist, magic man, man healer. And one of his modalities is NET. There's also Psyche, and there's a number of gestalt psychotherapy techniques. And this, this is just a few of the ones that uh, modalities that you can use, that you can explore, that you can find practitioners of for helping you to process and release stress or old trauma. So how do we stay present in ourselves, stay grounded, stay um, okay with ourselves in the face of unwanted drama? Well, first of all, we do have to do that self-care that allows us to actually um, be stabilized in a in a psychological and an emotional way within ourselves. So those again are some of the modalities. And um, the next piece of that really is self care and self inquiry. So self care, you know, if you're stressed out all the time, if you don't have good boundaries, if you don't know how to say no to people, eventually your 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 um, what do you call it? Your fuse gets short. Our fuses get short. We're only human. We have to. Um, be able to say yes when we mean yes, and we have to be able to say no when we mean no. And if we're having trouble with that kind of thing, it's probably because we have too much stress and we have old trauma. <laughs> so revert to step number one, which is looking for modalities to help you process uh, your uh, process and release stress and trauma. Okay, self inquiry is. This takes it to the next level. And I, I really, hey, Rian, welcome. Uh, I really want to begin to talk about what is called, and of course in Miracles, the split mind. And it might be called that elsewhere as well. Because if we really, really want to feel good about ourselves, where we are, if we want to feel deeply safe within, so that no matter what drama occurs outside of us, uh, we can s come from a place of love, of compassion, of presence, then, um, hey there, Pamela, good to see you here. So if we want to be in that stable, grounded place when basically the, the poop hits the fan or there's other dra there's drama out coming, coming around us, you know, family, friends, whatever, then it's really important that we look at the split mind, that we go within and we begin to really look at where we are a frequency match to that drama, that unwanted drama. And this requires a level of personal responsibility and personal ownership that it first might seem unreasonable, nonsensical even, and um, we really have to, what I want to say is that we really have to own our part in any drama, even if we seem like, wait, this has nothing to do with me. This is all their shit. We really have to own our part in order to have an undefended heart, okay? In order to really be in that place of an undefended, loving, compassionate heart when someone else is throwing all their turds at you and blaming you for everything. Uh, we, we have to look at the split mind and the misconception of forgiveness. So that's what I'm going to talk about now. So now I, I want to connect in with my guidance so that I can bring this across in a clear way and not get too wordy. So the split mind. When we are aware of our conscious thought, when we're consciously thinking, we know that we're thinking about, we're often thinking about whatever it is. I could be thinking about what I want to create for this video. I could be thinking about what I want to cook for dinner. I could be thinking about memories in the past experiences. I could be thinking about uh, something I love to do or be. I could be thinking about my next piece of pottery and how I am going to get that darn slab of clay centered on the wheel before I begin turning. I'm aware of my thoughts. I could be reading a book and I could be aware of my thoughts. And um, I also, most of us are trained to be aware of, of our goodness, 
our niceness, our kindness, or sometimes our anger and, and uh, our feelings, you know, our, when we're feeling intense feelings. But often what we're not aware of are the secret thoughts we're thinking when we're not paying attention to what we're thinking about. <laughs> this is the split mind. Many of us, probably most of us, certainly those of us in the West, are trained to hyperthink. We're indoctrinated from very early on. And so the thinking mind is active almost all the time. And the thinking mind, or it can also be called the ego mind. Hey, Georgiana, good to see you here. Hi, Ingrid, welcome. So the thinking mind is, or the ego mind, is constantly like churning out stuff. So when we aren't paying attention to that aspect of our thoughts, it goes off on tangents of who knows what. And that includes a lot of times a tremendous amount of judgment, a tremendous amount of um, thoughts that separate us. So opinions, judgment, bitterness, resentments, holding grudges, accuse, accusatory ideations, um, aggressive, resentful um, memories uh, or wishes on others. Um, the stuff that we don't want to own that we're actually thinking. <laughs> And it's very easy for us to deny that and ignore that. And to think, well, you know what? My mom always told me, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. And that creates a very nice, a very polite society. But that actually <laughs> puts kind of a blanket over our secret thoughts our thoughts of judgment, hate, resentment, bitterness, regret, anger, opinions, uh, road rage stuff, whatever. Uh, and so what that means is that we show the side of ourselves that's nice. But what we don't show is the ugly face. The ugly face is kept silent. But as we have come to understand the nature of reality, that everything is frequency, what we are coming to understand is that what we are emanating, we are uploading to the collective, and we are also therefore magnetizing back to us. And I know I did touch on this on the, in, the previous, in the previous video. So when we are keeping that's so we have the split mind the one mind says look i'm a nice person i wish the best for everybody i really do i i don't want to see anyone suffer i don't want to see war i don't want to see trauma you know i really want to forgive people who have hurt me or hurt others and that side we show that's the easy side to show but there's another side and that's that split mind the mind that it holds the judgments that holds the resentments that says i'm never going to show anyone this so who cares if i'm still bitter about my divorce i'm never going to show anyone this so who cares if you know um i actually hate the president and send him negative vibes and hope he goes to hell which by the way hey i'm not that's not true of me at all but i'm i'm giving voice to the silent talk that some of us have right so that's that split mind those silent thoughts, that frequency, we're uploading it to the collective. We're, we're energetically sending it out, uh, electro electromagnetically sending it out or electrically sending it out and drawing it back. So what this could mean is that one day you're going along or you go to your families for the holidays and everything's nice. And then a family member, a sibling comes in and all of a sudden they come unglued. And they unload on you all their hatred, their resentment, their bitterness that they've had for years. Has anyone experienced that? Well, if you have, you are not alone. Now, you might say, oh, wait a minute. I love my sibling. I, I, yeah, okay, maybe I was a jerk when I was a teenager, but I, I never wished them bad. 
how could you tell me, Dawn, that I'm a vibrational match to this? Well, I'm not suggesting that because person A has been attacking you that you're a match because you've been sending attack thoughts toward them. No, no, no. You've just been holding a frequency that is a kind of vibrational resonance with that energy. It could be that all of that, there's a similar signature of anger and resentment that you hold toward an ex-employer and it's not resolved. You've never let it go or some, somewhere else in your life or every time someone cuts you off on the freeway, you curse them out with a slew of, of curses and wish them ill. And you don't manage any of those frequencies at all. So it's just part of your life. You're like, hi, I'm the happy person. And ah. so that energy, if unresolved, unclarified, unlooked at, secretly hidden away, is not addressed, owned, and transmuted, then you're running that energy. Maybe not 24-7, but you're running it. And therefore, you're a frequency match to, to, um, to someone else's energy coming at you that way which is going to get me in a moment to this distinction I want to make about forgiveness. But before I say that, what I want to share, hey, Mom, Mwah. hey, Kristen, nice to see you. Hi, Lynette. Okay, so before I go there, what I want to say is, what do I want to say? Let me connect again so I don't get too wordy here. Okay, so I, I, want, to, I want to make a qualifier here. I am not suggesting that anyone is a bad person. I'm not suggesting that if these words I'm sharing with you resonate, that you guilt trip yourself. And I am not saying that I am not doing, I have not been in your shoes because I have. I couldn't talk about this if I wasn't. I am still and maybe for the rest of my life, will be in the process of clarifying my mind and really going within with self-inquiry to look at where my, um, my mind is split, where one part of me is loving and kind and wishes the best for others and another part maybe holds resentments or grudges or opinions or this kind of thing, okay? So this is a process and a journey. And it is part of, I would argue, absolutely a part of our awakening on planet Earth, that we simply must address the secret thoughts we're thinking when we don't realize we're thinking them. Because if we don't, we will continue to hold ourselves apart from other people on the planet, our sisters and our brothers. This is one planet, one family. And we must really begin to heal the separation thoughts, the judgment thoughts, the hate thoughts, the resentment thoughts, the fear thoughts, in order to absolutely and unconditionally hold the space of the undefended heart. So this leads me to the next point and probably the final point I want to make about this concept of forgiveness. And this is really an important one. Now, excuse me a minute. Now, most of us understand forgiveness, something like this. Person B did some wrong. They did some wrong to me or a loved one. And at first, I had all the typical feelings you would expect, anger, resentment, bitterness, judgment, fill in the blank. And because I wish to be a good person, I am going to be the bigger person and forgive them because I don't want to carry around the resentment anymore. That's the next higher iteration of it. But when, when you hold forgiveness in that way where you say, I see that you did something bad, but I'm going to go above you and I'm going to forgive you. So you can, every time you look at me, you're going to see the wound you perpetrated on me and see how I'm the better person because I've forgiven you. Can you see how that actually is not a forgiveness that fosters safety 
in relationship. It's better than nothing, but it's not actually the, the true essence of forgiveness. So the true essence of forgiveness, or what I would say, forgiveness as is understood from the perspective of non-dualism. And this is, again, as you've heard me say, I learned that I'm learning this through the Course in Miracles. Now, in the non-dualist understanding, which is found both in A Course in Miracles and the original teachings of Jesus, as well as the master teachers of the East, the Eastern world, non-dualism means that everything out there is actually a projection of me which means everybody that shows up in my field is reflecting something within me. Now, you, if you've listened to me talk, you've heard me say this over and over again, right? Okay, so um, if that principle is confusing to you, please, please, you know, leave me a message so that I could unpack this more in another video. I'm happy to do that. Um, and it, or if nothing else, share other, you know, other teachers with you that are articulated better than me. But let's for a minute just base our, that base our, conversation about forgiveness now on that assumption that everything out there is a reflection of what's in here. So what does that then imp apply, imply if someone comes and attacks you, judges you, hates you, hurts you? What does that imply? It implies that you're a frequency match for it because it's showing you something about yourself. So Forgiveness in the deepest sense of the world is that when I experience an attack, when I experience a hurtful ex encounter with someone, I say, wow, this is a gift. This is showing me something about myself that is not healed, that is running a frequency of whatever that is, a match, hate, anger, resentment, bitterness, victimization, scarcity, all of those um, what we would call negative experiences. So when I see that person and they come to me with their whatever it is, their attacking thoughts, anger, resentment, bitterness, I can go, well, I'm so much better than them. Look at them, they're blah, 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 blah. That's my ego, that's my split mind in defense protecting myself. How dare they say that about me? How dare they do that? Well, you know what? I know this, that, and the other about you, and blah, 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 and counterattack. Or I could do the next level of it and say, well, you know, I can just see that they're really suffering. So even though this has been very hurtful to me and it's really messed up, you know, X, Y, Z in my life, and I'm never going to forget it, I'm going to forgive them because I'm bigger than them. That's the next level of it. But the real forgiveness, the forgiveness that is liberating, the forgiveness that sets both people free is the one that says this, wow, thank you, person. You might say it silently, thank you for showing me something that I have unhealed inside myself. I will now go inward and I will find out where that is and I will forgive myself for running those frequencies. And in that recognition, in that loving intent to be, take ownership of where I was a frequency match for that, I am able to forgive them because I see that they were only a reflection of something in me. Now, I, I invite you all to take a breath and just be with that for a moment. When I take that difficult situation, and I go within and I own it and I say thank you for showing me a part of me that is unhealed and I go in and I look for that I find it and I lovingly surrender it offer it up to the divine that I may be healed and that they may be healed I forgive them because I recognize that they were only showing me a part of myself <sighs> It's uh, a very metaphysical concept in some ways. It's not what we are taught. We are not trained to see our true unity. We are not trained to live with an undefended heart. 
we are not trained to center ourselves in the ground of our being, which is the oneness of all life, which is the divine reflected, embodied in each of us, experiencing within and through each of us. And so it takes time to heal. It takes time to shift our energies. It's a process. It's a journey back toward the mother, father, God. It's a journey back toward unity. It's a journey to heal the split mind and to really embody the power of forgiveness so that we can walk in the world with an undefended heart. Have I accomplished this? No, it's a process for me too. I'm working on it. I'm just one of those people who, as I start to get something, I like to share it because I know we are at critical times on this planet and we don't really have time to faff around in our drama anymore. We really don't. So as you move into the holiday season, if you are celebrating the holidays, perhaps you're going to be spending time with family members. Perhaps you're going to have to be dealing with some unwanted drama. I invite you to reflect on the, these words. Uh, shoot, I invite you to start reading The Course in Miracles. I invite you to look for any non-dual teachings that resonate with you that can help you to begin your own healing journey if you're not already on it, to really recognize the way in which everything is energy, everything is frequency, everything out there is a frequency match, it's a mirror of something in here. And to get the tools and support you need to be do enough healing in here to walk with that undefended heart. And those tools can include, to refer back to the beginning of this video, some of those amazing modalities that are available to us to help us clear and process un unprocessed trauma. Thanks for the thumbs up to help us um, transform and transmute old wounds, old trauma, and to reduce stress. Absolutely, that's essential. So let me just, I want to check in and see what else. Yeah, there's one other piece, which is, okay, all of this is wonderful, you know, um, long-term healing and recommends recommendations and suggestions, Dawn, but how do I deal with that crazy family member? Because I still have to deal with them. Thank you for all the love, Susan. Thank you, everyone who's given me the love and the thumbs up. So, yeah, how do you deal with that person or people or situation when you are still, when you haven't yet used some modalities to help you uh, deal with unprocessed trauma, lower your stress? Uh, and when you haven't yet gone into full, you know, this full sense of like the deep inner work of personal responsibility, forgiveness as is taught in the non-dual teachings of uh, A Course in Miracles and other teachings, how do you deal with them? <sighs> Self-care, boundaries, breathing, um, uh, limiting your time with them if you really need to be with them. Uh, prayer and the prayer that I've been teaching for a long time, which is I offer this up to the Holy Spirit that we may both be healed and free. Every time you catch yourself going back into the battlefield of fighting them in your mind, of holding the anger and resentment, maybe you're at the dinner table and a big something, something, a hoo-ha ensues. You go up to your room and you're like, ah! <laughs> this is when prayer mantras what can you do to not engage in your mind? Forget about engaging them, just even in your mind. What can you do to not engage and go down there in the battlefield? Offer it up to the Holy Spirit, to the Mother, Father, God. Ask for the guidance of your guides and angels. Look for the modalities. If you know EFT tapping, that's a great one. You can use it right then. You can just start tapping somewhere on your body, you know, just... Breathing and tapping, breathing and tapping. I love myself. I accept myself. This too shall pass. I ask for the guidance of my guides and angels. I surrender my resentments. I am ready to release this. I ask for support and forgiveness. So these are some of the like sort of in the, in the moment. I mean, you could even be like, it's happening. It's right there happening. Some drama's unfolding. You could literally like, where is it? Like this uh, here, right there. Under the table. You know, or t just tapping on it. Under the table so nobody sees it. Or tapping here on your, your one of your collarbones. Either one here you could tap. 
you know, just and breathe, breathe, breathe. So these are a few uh, ways to kind of deal with it when it's happening or right afterwards. The long-term solution is get some help with alternative modalities to reduce your stress and to um, process unprocessed trauma. And then really start looking at the ways in which you are a frequency match to the unwanted events and circumstances in your life. Oh, by the way, as well as the wanted ones, of course, because everything out there really is a reflection of what's in here. And so explore that concept and ask for your guides and angels, master teachers and the non-physical to assist you in releasing the old resentments, in opening to the space of love, so that you can be a source of love and light walking in this world. Because in these times, as these higher frequencies are bathing us on planet Earth, because of where we are moving through our galaxy, more and more drama is going to ensue. And I've been hearing it from different friends and families. You know, absolute crazy ass meltdowns happening in family uh, events and situations. So again, if you've experienced this, you are not alone. The question is, what are you going to do about it? So if you want to avoid unlimited, uh, unwanted drama, go within, begin your forgiveness practice, take responsibility for your vibrational match, not to beat yourself up, but to see it as an opportunity for true healing at a very deep level. Okay, it is time for my spouse and I to head out to a holiday event. So I wish you all much love, bright blessings, and peace during this holiday season. Bye for now and more to come.